Hello everyone, this is Jason from Average Level Gaming, and today I'll be teaching you how to speedrun Muck, a new survival roguelike game created by YouTuber Donnie. The primary category that I'll be covering today is the random seed full game category. As of this recording, I've ran the game for about a week now since I was inspired to by Easy Speezy's video on the speedrun. However, he was performing the big chunk percent, which is a different category. The category that I'll be covering involves finishing the game completely, including defeating the last boss. Although I'll be covering a certain category in detail, I'll cover general tips for speedrunning before anything else. These tips can be used in any category. Well, besides the collect a rock category. Let's get started. So, a large part of Muck is moving around and finding resources, and obviously, this would be made easier if you can move faster. Thankfully, bunny hopping can be very well utilized in Muck. After you sprint for a few seconds, jump and immediately release the sprint button. Releasing the sprint button is not necessary, however, you will continue to drain stamina mid-air as if you were sprinting on the ground if you continue to hold the button. Right when you land, press the jump button again and you should maintain your speed. Using this method, you can obtain very fast speeds. Also, you can hold the jump button the entire time instead of pressing it when you land, but I've had issues with this sometimes. This trick is very useful, especially when coming down from a hill. You can jump down the hill and maintain your speed by performing a bunny hop on the bottom of a slope. Using this, you can really fly across the land. However, I wouldn't recommend using this technique uphill or even up a slight incline. You can get stuck on some terrain and sometimes even jump upwards very slowly, costing you a lot of time. Finally, any jump upgrades will of course make bunny hopping a lot easier. The technique honestly makes any jump upgrades into speed upgrades. Another general tip includes what the community has called Quick Switch. Quick Switch is basically an animation slash cooldown cancel, and performing a Quick Switch is quite simple, but hard to do consistently without practice. For an example, we'll be using a rock. Hit a tree with a rock while the rock is in the second slot on your hotbar. Right after the rock hits the tree, switch to your first slot, and then switch back to your second slot. After that, just repeat. Although formal testing hasn't been performed for how fast the Quick Switch is, it definitely can half the time it takes to farm resources, depending on your upgrades. Although I recommend using the proper tool in the second equipment slot, the switching can be formed in any slot on your hotbar. I recommend the second slot because I find it easy to have your middle finger on your 1 key and your pointer finger on your 2 key. This leads to a pretty simple flow of switching between the slots. You can even just hold down your mouse during this so you can focus on the rhythmic tapping of your two fingers. Using the quick switch, you can definitely save a lot of time, whether it be during a speed run, or even during a casual run, to speed up some slow adamantite farming. For the last general tip, I want to talk about the seed that you start on. Muck is a reset-heavy game, there is no sugarcoating that. However, a seed can be evaluated extremely quickly. After only about 20 resets, you could probably determine if a seed is worth it within 4-5 to five seconds. The best part about speedrunning Muck is that the game is extremely easy to restart. Honestly, you'll probably be back in a new seed within 10 seconds of quitting. So, what are you looking for with these seeds? The simplest answer is houses and caves. Both of these structures have chests which can end up giving you coins, food, swords, and most importantly, tools. These tools can be used to break the general progression of muck. Although you typically move from wood to steel to mithril and find an adamantite, it saves a lot of time if you start on steel or gold. Granted, these tools are pretty rare, but they really let you skip a lot early. To give a quick example, let's say that you also found some fir wood in the house you found at the beginning of the run. Well, you could easily get a quick vein of mithril with a golden pickaxe you found, and you can quickly craft a mithril sword. Using the sword, you can start farming battle shrines and gain a lot of upgrades to generally increase your speed. Although the game involves a lot of resetting, Thankfully, it is very fast resetting. Also, when you do get a good run, it feels great to truly go fast. That pretty much covers my general tips for going fast in muck. Now, let's get into the category-specific tips. First off, let me clearly state the goals of the run. The timer starts when you load in, and ends when you defeat the final boss of the game. In between that, you need to be able to defeat all five gem guardians, and gather all materials needed to fix the boat. 
Now, you may notice that creating all the different tools, armor, and weapons are not required at all. In fact, the general goal of this category is not to do any resource gathering yourself. Now you may be asking, if I'm not gathering resources, who will be doing it for me? The answer? The bosses. The boss enemies in Muck are able to deal damage to trees and to ore veins in the world. The ideal boss for resource farming is usually Big Chunk. This is because he is much more passive when compared to the other two bosses, and his main attack will shoot out three projectiles which can damage three targets in the distance, while also dealing damage around himself. In the clip that you've been watching, you can see that I've been making the most of this strategy for quite a while now. Although it may feel like you are doing nothing while you're waiting for Big Chunk to attack, you're actually saving a massive amount of time. If there happens to be oak trees and adamantite veins near you, you can go for an adamantite sword, pickaxe, and axe before the first night even starts. At this point, all you really need to do is find the gem guardians and gather other resources to fix the boat. Backtracking a bit to the seed of your run, you are still looking for steel or golden tools, however, you pretty much only want a steel or golden pickaxe now. This is because your next order of business involves a Big Chunk boss statue. Although Big Chunk's main use is farming resources for you, you want to also be able to kill him once he's done farming for you. Another important aspect of saving time is trying to farm resources while Big Chunk is also farming resources. So, if you see some standard rock or iron, do not waste time and start hitting it. After a few runs, you may even want to try constructing furnaces while Big Chunk is still attacking. This will help save some time later in the run, since you need to smelt almost all kinds of ore before you finish the game. Another thing that I recommend is keeping a, a list of all the boat repair resources. This will help you keep track of what you are missing and what you currently have. You do not want to waste 5 minutes looking for those pesky blue flowers which you need 13 of for some reason. Here's a list of all the materials that you will need if you are speedrunning a single player category. If you are speedrunning with more than one person, the values increase, so don't follow this list if that is the case. From the list, the most important ones to remember are the Obamium, Flax, and Adamantite. These are the ones that I tend to forget since I feel they are easily forgettable, so definitely keep those in mind. This next part involves one of my favorite parts about Muck as a speed game, the randomness of it all. What I mean by this is that a 1% drop from an enemy can change things for the entire run. For example, in the run that you're currently watching, I received an ancient bone early in the run. The ancient bone is used to craft the best bow in the game, and I decided that I could utilize this later in the run, provided that I had the correct amount of dark oak wood. Later in the run, this ended up happening, and I got some nice chip damage on the final boss. Although the bow damage was nothing to write home about, I bet if my aim was better, I could have taken a minute off of my final time. There are a bunch of items like this in Muck, and I think if given the opportunity, it is important to play around it and seize this opportunity. The most powerful drop that I could think of is the Wyvern Claw, which is an incredibly fast weapon that can go crazy on the final boss. Just make sure to say a prayer to RNGesus Jesus before the run starts. I hope that this guide assists you in your journey to becoming an average level muck speedrunner like myself. When I wanted to get in the speedrunning side of muck, I could not find a general guide that explained a lot of the finer points of the run, so I hope this helps you out. At the time of this recording, I'm currently third in the leaderboard for the category, however, the run can be greatly improved, since the person in first place has about 6 minutes on me. Also at the time of this recording, there's only 16 speedruns that are verified. For a game this fun, that is a critically low number of people. We have barely scratched the potential for Muck as a speedrun, and who knows, maybe you'll be the one to do it. Thanks for watching the video, I hope that you got something out of it and you will give the speedrun a try. If you have any further questions, please comment below and I'd be happy to answer them. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe so we can get our videos flowing through the YouTube algorithm. This is Jason from Average Level Gaming, signing off.